Hi guys, Denny Giosa here, 10 Minutes of Tone. Hey Brad, I see you there. How you doing? Man, this is going to be casual. This is a new idea I had. Uh, uh, first off, I want to welcome everybody here. I see we have a few viewers and hopefully it'll, it'll fill up here. But uh, I'm going to start doing this every couple of weeks. I'm going to alternate playing the uh, wine and jazz evenings with the uh, 10 minutes of tone and hopefully this will uh, this will sound uh, or actually catch on and become a little more busy. I call it 10 minutes of tone even though it's probably going to be longer than that because I welcome questions from you. I'm actually seeing the uh, comments this time which I don't do when I do the wine and jazz evenings. Um, but on this series I want to talk about tone and how to achieve it. Uh, I have actually got a handout that uh, I can uh, be happy to share with you guys and I will post a link next week uh, with that and you can download it for free and uh, hey Nick how you doing and um, Paul in Florida we got people from all over the place it's great Brad is in uh, Michigan I believe right uh, so this is awesome um, so I want to talk about how I get my tones. I've been doing this my whole life. I go to universities and classrooms and teach about how to distinguish tone, all the, the factors that um, uh, affect, not affects, but affect your tone everywhere from uh, your fingers, which is where it starts, in your hand. And hi, Kathy. And, uh, uh, goes to the st kind of strings you're using, what gauge you're using, the pickups, the wood of the guitar, uh, any modifications you have, the cables, I use these great cordial cables, they're this, the best in the world, they're made in Germany, love them. Um, uh, and then it, then it goes to the, the pick, you know, I'm a gravity pick user, we're gonna, we'll, I'm just gonna kinda go through these quickly. Jerry, how you doing? And um, uh, we'll talk in great detail about picks. Picks are an amazing uh, part of your tone and articulation and what you get out of it. Uh, I use this big old fat gravity pick. Everybody usually has a fit over how big that thing is, but uh, there's a joke there, but I'm not going to touch it. Okay, so here we go. So, so uh, big fat tone out of this versus a thinner pick, and we'll compare all those. Tonight, I just really want to kind of do a quick rundown, a briefing, let you know that I will have the handout, and we'll kind of follow that. Um, uh, kind of like a class in tone is what I'd like to make it. So um, I'm really blessed with all kinds of great gear here, and... Um, uh, and sponsorships, you know, from Gravity Picks and Diodario Strings and Paul Reed Smith Guitars and Whitfield Guitars and uh, Godan Guitars. And uh, man, I tell you, it's just an amazing uh, thing that has happened for me in my life to be able to do what I love and make a living and have the support of these great companies and be friends with these guitar builders and pit builders and cable guys and all of them. So I love them like family. It's great to have them and their support. So I want to support them by giving back and talking about their great products. So tonight, um, you know, I'm going to make, I am going to make it quick tonight. And uh, um, I want you to know that uh, what I'm going to do is walk around and kind of show you a quick synopsis of what's here in the studio, if that's cool, and show you what... Uh, what some of the gear that I do have and what I'll be featuring. I have a lot of PRS guitars and uh, like I said, the Whitfield Strat. It's the greatest Strat I've ever played in my life and he's building me a telly. It's coming soon. Um, uh, recent, uh, I recently acquired this beauty, which is a, a vintage original spec 59 Gibson Les Paul and it kind of came out of nowhere. That's a whole nother story. We can talk stories. You guys can ask me questions. You can have comments. All of the above. It's like anything goes. Let's just talk about tone and gear. That's it. We'll just make it fun. And I know for some people, talking gear is really not what you're interested in. But uh, uh, and I would 
would still love for you to stay. I'm going to do a little bit of playing, and uh, uh, but we're going to be talking. We're going to be gearheads on here, guys. So uh, it's it's a lot of fun and something I enjoy doing very much. Oh, speaking of Whitfield, you guys know me and my wine. There's a Whitfield guitar wine glass. How cool is that, huh? It's great. Of course, it's filled with Italian wine. But I talk about that on the other nights. So. So let's walk around. I'm going to take the camera off of here now and hand hold it so it might be a little, little uh, jiggly. Um, listen, let me tell you about this. I just acquired this thing. This is a, a Kemper. And we'll, we'll go into detail on that thing too. Uh, that's, a, that's a new item. I just got it this week. Uh, and it's a convenience factor. Uh, I need a haircut. It's a convenience factor uh, for taking your tones outside your studio without carrying everything with you. So, um, okay, so I'm going to switch the lens around here, and so you don't have to look at my face, and we can look at, at gear if I can find the button here to do it. Well, oh, there it is. Okay. So tonight, instead of doing the Dolby On, which I like their app, I'm doing uh, Facebook Live. Uh, just w w There's a few bugs in the other app, and any of you that join me for the wine and jazz evening, uh, you know that we cut in and out some. So I'm trying the Facebook Live and just see how that works. But these are some of the amps we're going to talk about, and I don't want to give all the way all, everything away now as to what those entail. That's all Paul Reed Smith amps that Paul built for me. A uh, little Mesa Boogie there. This is a fantastic amp. VVT amps. These are made in Maryland as well. All hand-wired, handmade. Just fantastic. And we'll sample those. You'll get to hear those. Hi, Yoshi. How you doing? And um, one of my, my PRS 594 there in the corner. My console that I mix and produce on. There's my baby, my 175. It's a 1967. I've had that for many, many years. Over here is just a rack of, of studio gear that, may, I don't know, we can talk about that if you guys want to. This is kind of a special guitar to me. Even though he's hiding back here in the back, this is um, a 1976 Gibson Les Paul Deluxe with the mini humbuckers that uh, I bought new when I was a kid. And uh, hey, David Brown. And um, here's, oh, there's that's a beauty right there. That's a, a completely hollow body Paul Reed Smith. There's my Whitfield Strat. I mean, I hope that there's, you know, if with this thing catches on, we'll just go through all of these guitars sometime. And because, and, man, I'll tell you, the pickups, the wood on the neck, the wood of the body, the day the guitar was made, that's one of my favorites right there. It's a semi-hollow PRS. Uh, there's a, another McCarty down there. That's a, a um, Carina, 100% Carina. That's a baby doll. That thing sounds sweet. This is the first PRS I ever bought. That's a Custom 24. I'll try to work on the lighting. I see I'm kind of shadowing things here. Uh, Custom 24, 1990. That I, first one I bought before I ever knew Paul. And that thing is a monster. Just a monster. So, um, great. Hi, Drew. Um, my friend Drew Sturkey, a great blues guitarist, is online. I see him from Chattanooga. And uh, uh, I produced a record on Drew. We're getting ready to do another one. He's a fine musician. Check out his music. It's drewsturkey.com. Uh, there's amps. Let's look at pedals here. You know, I love to go straight into the front of these amps, all of them, but uh, I also do love my pedals. There's nothing, nothing more fun than having, um, having some cool pedals to play with. So I want to talk about all these, which I, again, tonight, I'm not going to go into all these because when we do it, I want to be able to, uh, to give a, uh, uh, hey, Mike, uh, hi, Cynthia, uh, to uh, give a little demo of it. Here's another company that's really been supportive of me, and they make great products. It's Hot Tone Audio. Can you guys hear me okay? Everything okay? Thumbs up, somebody. Um, but 
Thanks. So, uh, Hot Tone Audio, they've got a pedal out called the Impero. And um, um, we'll talk about that. It's it's like a, a, a modeling uh, pedal that is so convenient. I use it at church all the time at uh, Lifehouse uh, where I play. And I see Debbie's on there. Hey, Debbie, there's a little plug for the church. You guys here in the Nashville area, check out Lifehouse in Jolton. Great people, great church. Uh, so there's a few of the pedals. Man, I've got... I've got more than I know what to do with over here. <laughs> There's a drawer full. There's another drawer full. And then if we come in here, hope you guys are digging this. Uh, in here, this is our, the tracking room. Let me see if I can get a little more light happening. There we go. So in here, I've got all my cabinets. And uh, again, getting back to tone and what it's how to achieve it i can't tell you how much and how important the speaker choice that you make is how important the cabinet choice is there's so many factors guys that go into making your tone right and um i've i've heard fantastic guitar players that's my son's jcm 800 how you like that that's a rocker and his and also his bass amp. I don't own that. That's his. But uh, uh, but anyway, uh, everything affects your tone, guys. It's everything in line in the signal flow is part of your sound. And I started to say that um, I hear a lot of great players. I mean, they they know how to play the instrument. Fantastic. But man, their tone kind of leaves you cold, and so. You end up not listening for very long because it's just it's either harsh or just empty flat sounding um, you want it to respond to your playing you want to be able to make it your voice and um, it takes time to do that for you young players you older guys you know it takes a lot of time to find your voice and some some players never find their voice uh, in regard to uh, their tone on their guitar and what they hear in their head what they want to do but uh, we can help with that. So, so uh, it's amazing when I go and do these clinics and talk about it. Uh, I've had guys my age go, man, I've been playing 35 years, and uh, which is, you know, my age. But, um, uh, and I've never thought about how the pick affects my tone. Never thought about it. Kyle, I see you're on there. Thanks for watching. Uh, uh, I see Brad is saying, I'm still working on my voice. And, and I know Brad is, uh, I won't give your age away, Brad, but I know he's, he's close to me. So, uh, but uh, at any rate, it does take a lot of time and trial and error and not always a lot of expense. You, if you find gear that you like, you know, one little tweak can make a difference, you know, uh, uh, in your technique, your playing, and your sound. So it's really a, a great thing. I just get, I can't tell you, I just get all the time. I always have since I was younger. I started using, oh, I forgot to show you this. So this amp down here, that's a 1980 Mesa Boogie Mark IIb that I bought, uh, I bought new at, when I was three. <clears throat> no kidding. Um, and... Uh, you know, ever since I've had that guitar and that 76 Les Paul, I've had people go, man, your tone, how do you get that tone? Um, I just hear, I just hear what, I, what I'm looking for, and I am trained as an engineer, so I know how to look for it and what to dial out and what to dial in. So, uh, hey, Mike Griffin. So, um, uh, it's, it's so many factors that go into finding those sounds, you know, so... Don't give up, you guys that are frustrated. And like I said, you don't have to spend a fortune to find it. Uh, but we can talk about the difference between solid state amps and tube amps and how they react and uh, respond to you uh, from the kind of strings you use. Um, just, like I said, so many factors, so many factors. So if anybody has any questions, I'm watching the comments right now. Uh, shoot me a question. Um, 
Man, we've already been on here almost 17 minutes, so see, that's what I mean. 10 minutes of tone, i got to be honest with you. Blah, blah, blah. Hi, Eddie. <laughs> Leave it to an Italian. Come on, Mugavero. Um, the uh, uh, 10 minutes of tone just kind of rolls off your tongue, so I kind of like the way it sounded. And They may last 10 minutes, they may last 30, you know? So if you guys want to keep talking, we can keep talking. Um, yeah, somebody uh, somebody mentioned about uh, finding the voice in music, and uh, I had a lady comment to me uh, recently when I was playing a show. She says, "You know, your guitar when you play it sounds like someone singing, sounds like a voice." And so, um, it's uh, that's uh, was a huge compliment because that's something that I I really try to go for. I've always it's always been about the music for me and communicating that. So. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's get rid of the dirt for a minute, and, uh, I also want to talk about, you know, not only the, the gear that I use, what is the best way to mix a bass drum, what mic to use, hey Kyle, Okay, I'll tell you one of my secret weapons when I cut drums. See, see, we're going to get into some engineering things too, which I, I like. Um, I've been blessed to uh, record some really fantastic drummers, Kyle uh, Jones being one of them, uh, and uh, Chester Thompson and Ron Tut from Neil Diamond, and uh, uh, just a lot of great drums. Danny Gottlieb from Pat Metheny. I've, I've been so fortunate and blessed to engineer and record those guys. Um, the mic that I use is a Electro Voice H68, uh, and uh, that is, uh, to me, the bomb as far as I... I shot out a bunch of uh, kick drum microphones, and that one won to my ear. And then for those you, you uh, gearheads out there that know who George Massenberg is, about um, uh, a couple months after I made my choice, I see an article that George also said that was the greatest kick drum mic, so I went... Ah, I'm in good company, so, you know. Um, so, anyway, uh, that's kind of what, uh, what I want to do with this show, is talk about gear and how to get tones and how to use the gear, how to dial up an amp, you know, how you can uh, raise the master and lower the, uh, the channel to get a cleaner sound. Like, I'll show you right now, what the heck. So here's, so right now I've got, uh, here, I'll bring this a little closer. Uh, look at how you like that dolly work there. Right now I've got the master on the amp at about 11 o'clock and the, the channels at like nine o'clock. So I get this kind of West Montgomery, nice, smooth, clean. <laughs> get that kind of clean tone. If you want to get a little bit of grit on it and not get any louder, bring the master down and bring the channel up. And now listen. Let's go a little bit more here. Turn the master down. That will uh, that will kind of give you a little bit of edge on it. Tom Newton, how's my Les Paul different than my PRS guitars? Good question. Uh, and what model of Electro Voice mic? Brad's asking. That was a uh, EV eight sixty eight. Is uh, is the mic? And I'll be glad to get those out also, you know, and show you guys sometime. But uh, the difference between the Paul Reed Smith and the Les Paul is probably that Les Paul growl that that you can't, uh, you know. I think I went out of tune, guys. Hang on a minute. I must have bumped it. I did. So 
there's that Les Paul sound, right? Okay, so there's the Les Paul sound with the with the PRS's, I'm going to grab one here, hang on. I don't know about you guitar players out there, but the humidity is kind of uh, catching up to my instruments right now, so hopefully this is in good shape. So, uh, it's just a, it's a more focused sound, not quite as growly. Um, that sound out of a Les Paul, but, you know, Les Paul does its own thing, and it's fantastic, so... This is the Custom 24 that I told you about earlier. Um, the other thing that this guitar does that a Les Paul doesn't do is you can split the coils on it. So you can get these real pretty kind of... Uh... <laughs> Hi, Nick. Your, your PRS doesn't sound like that? Well, we're going to work on that for you, okay? So you can kind of hear, it kind of gets a little bit of a stratty sound. Single coil, because it's, it's by splitting the coils I'm talking about inside these pickups, for you guys that don't know. Uh, hey, Greg Riggle, how you doing? Good to see you on here. Brian Walter, one of my best friends in the world. We grew up playing music together in Indiana. So inside these pickups, there's actually two what look like single coils side by side that cancel each other out so there's no noise. That's how they came up with a humbucker, right? So with this switch on Paul's guitar, you can split those coils and get that single coil kind of, kind of tone, this. Plus, Tom, as you know, I've got trim bars on these. And uh, I love to use my trim bar, and that's the other thing. And I mean, Paul builds such a such a strong guitar that you can you can dive bomb this thing, right? So, um, well, I'm moving around so much, I unplugged myself. Okay. Here we go. So, right back you know so uh, big differences in Paul's guitars and the, the Les Paul and both of them are outstanding speaking of different guitars for you players out there when you pick up a different guitar like you go from a Gibson to a Strat or a PRS or a nylon string which I want to talk about Godan also eventually um, you play differently. It, each of these guitars, everybody goes, why do you need so many? You know, uh, it's like each of these guitars has their own voice. You know, it, it really does. They, they all have a different sound to them. They all make me play differently and respond differently. Both are great, just different tools. That's exactly right, Tom. That's exactly right. So, and that's what I'm saying about all these. They're all tools for different flavors. What mood are you in? What are you trying to accomplish? I certainly couldn't do what I just did on this 
on that Gibson ES-175. That's a big fat jazz box, which I played last week. And it's a beautiful warm tone like West Montgomery. So, hi Cheryl. Good to see you. Thanks for coming on. Um, so, man, I'm having fun. I hope you guys are having fun. Uh, and I want to do this weekly, I guess. I mean, I've already been on 30 minutes. See, I can talk. Man, I can talk. Must be the Italian in me. Everybody's giving thumbs up about talking. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> so, anyway, we are... Uh, I, I'm going to wind down here. Let me hang this guitar back up, folks. And each each week, I really want to focus on a new thing. I don't want to be so broad like this one is. Uh, I want to focus on on um, you know like picks. Like we'll we'll focus on listen to different picks, and hopefully it will. I'm pretty sure it'll translate uh, across the internet. Um. <laughs> you better, Kyle. I don't like it when you're off those meds. Kyle says he's got to go take his meds, so uh, go do it. Paul. Hey Hicks, how you doing? Um, so, uh, I don't know. I'm Like I said, I've really been fortunate to get to do this. I, I'm still like I was when I was, you know, a kid. You plug in and you hit one note. Alright guys, so I'm going to say goodnight, go eat some dinner, and uh, drink a little Italian wine. Salute, cheers, love you, stay safe and healthy, be careful out there. It's crazy right now, so let's get back to life so we can get out and uh, get playing music, okay? Mm -hmm.